Hey everybody, Kenny, I am back. It's been a while, my apologies, but started a new job. I'll tell you guys more about that in a video update later. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to be doing another one of my top five camp spots. The previous one was the Forest River South, which covered from the Nuka Cola plant up to Hillfall Cot Dogs. So we're going to be in the Forest South as well, but we're going to be going inland now. As far as, let's see, the white, water, white powder winter sports uh, northeast, and you got White Springs area down here to the southeast. So that's kind of the forest south region. And this first spot here, which is next to Orwell Orchards, uh, New River Gorge Bridge, and Cow Spots Creamery, uh, I've got a definite soft spot in my heart for this location. Um, it, you can see the bridge over there to the left, and you get the creamery over here to the right. Um, but the reason I love this spot is that this was the first location I ever made a camp that was not on a f large flat area. I was very heavily dependent on large flat areas in my first uh, few months playing the game until I started to challenge myself with some more tiered, multi-tiered, angled hills and whatnot. So this was the, the first location I did that was a hill. So. I was looking specifically for areas that had like ledges and whatnot, just to at least have some flat ground to work with. So you've got this initial rock ledge here, and all the way down here. With with the sphere of the camp uh, build area, I was able to get all the way down onto these ledges, as well as to this ledge area over here. And there's a neat little pathway here that has a, a little gate. So sometimes it's, for me, it, finding these little interactive or, or Part of the world kind of things like this uh, is what really sells me on a location in a camp. You know, th that gate's the first thing that caught my eye as I was running down this road when I originally discovered this location. So uh, this is, was a lot of fun to build here. I was able to have in total five structures uh, from the main house to kind of a... It looked like a... Uh, I tried to build it like it was an actual uh, kind of a, a ranch house because of the orchards here with all these trees. And so it was, it was a lot of fun building here. And uh, the, as far as enemies, the only thing you're gonna deal with is some of the Mr. Farm hands that kind of roam through the forest. So having a couple turrets up top wasn't a bad idea just to p take care of them. But other than that, it's a, a pretty peaceful and quiet location. Uh, no mineral uh, you know, or, or no resource nodes or anything like that to, to speak of. Um, but uh, definitely give this spot a shot if you're looking at something that's multi-tiered but has some flat areas uh, to work with. Alright, next spot. And the second location we're going to take a look at is uh, what I call the, the Rope Bridge. And it's right here next to Lakeside Cabins. So convenient to be able to run down there and take over that workshop mine your lead and, and whatnot, but if you just, uh, from the northern cabin here, the nor nor northern house, if you just run up the hill here, you've got this neat little drawbridge, and this is of course another example of a location that is not flat, because you got, you know, you're literally along a cliff, but there are some flat areas, as you can see, like right here, you're able to build a good chunk of, of stuff down here. Um, now... There are no resource nodes, and I think the only thing I ever got attacked with here was wild mongrels. You have a nice little pathway here, kind of just takes off there to the south, across the bridge, and the pathway continues north. A little skeleton there, so I was able to build a, a pretty fun little um, kind of raider style camp here. Very kind of eclectic, uh, almost like a dr druggy kind of look at looking aesthetic to it so definitely recommend checking this one out and for our next location we have uh, this nice large flat area it's just east of uh, you got Riverside Manor then the Bleeding Kate's Grindhouse far enough away from it to not have any issues with uh, aggro from those guys over there but you have a settler here that's kind of useful, just kind of shooting things and whatnot. You have a ore deposit here, uh, but in general this is an area that I like to, to build in that's nice and flat. Uh, if you want a larger structure, 
use vehicles. Of course, you can work around these guys and build out into the, the hillside here. And this is a fantastic location if you're looking to you know, kind of build what looks like a legitimate just dwelling alongside the road, uh, which I've done in the past. And of course your iron right there. And just up the, the road is the uh, fissure where you get your Scorch Beasts. Uh, obviously you're far enough away here that it's not any issue. But uh, just a quick little run up there and get your daily Scorch Beast if that's a challenge. And on to the next spot. And for our next location, we're just up the road north of Overlook Cabin. And this is another fantastic flat location. As you can see, this area along the river here is um, ideal for building large structures. I built uh, I built a couple different ones here. In fact, my remake of Breeze Home and War Maidens from Skyrim was placed on this location. The only thing I deal with here is uh, let's see, mutants, uh, super mutants walking down the road, and wild mon mongrels. But the super mutants tend to be pretty weak, even though the one way sun thing is going on. Uh, they're still pretty a bit of a pushover so I haven't had too many large issues with that but it's great lake front property here a lot of potential for for some really beautiful kind of uh, contemporary or some of those modern houses I have, I have yet to do a modern camp uh, really but uh, this will be that the place I'll definitely do it when the time comes for that so on to the next location and for our final location, it's a bit of a twofer because there's two locations that are so close together that I'm going to uh, show them off right now. So we are right next to the Charleston station, of course. And just outside of it, you have this little shack here. Oftentimes has a settler there. So you can get your camp module kind of over here. Let's double check this. Yep. Got to get it about this far from the uh, station over there. But... This building is fantastic. You can really do a lot, of, a lot inside of it. I've got a friend who's got a, his camp here, and so he's put a lot of good work into building out, uh, out the building. Obviously, this pond right there for your industrial water purifiers. So this is overall a fantastic location. There's an explosives crate. You know, get consistent, steady supply of uh, stuff there. Bed already there, so yeah, I definitely recommend this location if you're looking for a, a pre-existing location uh, to work with. And of course, right next to this is this building right over here, which is another fantastic uh, pre-existing location. So this guy here. So as you can see, you get your camp module right up to it. I'm gonna go ahead and hop up. You can build your camp module completely on top of this uh, building. Come on. See, as you can see, eh, it's kind of a little tricky, but you can get it up here. And so this is another fantastic location. I've seen some people really do some great raider style and kind of takeover of this building here. And of course this location here just right there southeast of the station. So I hope you enjoyed those uh, top five locations, technically six, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the the new season. It's going to be starting up that season. It's going to be fun. Hopefully you got some good stuff in the Atomic Shop for once. Take care guys. I'll see you in the wasteland.